what's up everybody i am walking because um last year uh, actually a year ago to this uh, uh date almost uh, this month march 2023 i had an uh, issue uh had my gallbladder i went to the er had some major pains after a few days had an infection ended up being uh, a bad gallbladder gallbladder was basically being green because of gallstones and they ended up removing it and after post-op, I ended up uh, getting AFib, atrial fibrillation, which is a, a very common heart irregularity, heart beat. And uh, basically, your heart goes out of sync. And the biggest deal, besides feeling bad and your heart doing 150 beats plus whatever per minute, um, it can give you a stroke, which is a pretty big deal, right? So. End up being, uh, they end up giving me some uh, beta blockers and that helped, but it made me feel pretty bad, you know, pretty tired. And then I cut down the prescription level and felt better, but I was still tired and bad. Plus, I'm healing. So, four months later, I ended up getting super, super sick, you know, and uh, had like a vertigo, a dizziness, which is a dizziness. And uh, there's some other stuff. It was like bad. Like the vision went went to hell. You know, like I had double vision and everything. What was it really? I don't know. But going on a few more months after trying to heal from that, my AFib came back. And I don't know why. And uh, I went up going to a cardiologist that I went to that uh, was uh, from when I saw him at the hospital from the first time in March. And I said, okay, um, I watch here. So my Samsung watch here has been picking up all this irregular heartbeats. Is it legit? And he's like, yeah, it looks legit. And I'm like, well, what can I do? He goes, well, if it keeps on happening, we'll put you, you know, I'm taking baby aspirin. It's supposed to be a blood thinner. And uh, we'll put you on a stronger blood thinner. I'm like, okay, so what does that do for me? And uh, he just tells me, well, I'll keep you from getting a stroke. I'm like, okay, but... Does that, you know, fix anything? Do I, do I feel better or anything? And, uh, you know, is, is it going to, you know, cure me or anything? No. It's just going to keep me from getting a stroke. Maybe. <laughs> you know, most of the time they say it does help. So you won't get a blood clot. Blood clot doesn't go to your brain. It will cause a stroke. So, great. That doesn't even help. And I'm going to, a, a, what that? I think it's called electrophysiologist. Basically a cardiologist that specializes in uh in uh what do you call it um, heart rhythms and then they stuck uh what they call a halter monitor which is basically a, a monitor they stick to your 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 renew your heart and uh it'll monitor your stuff you know monitor your heartbeats monitor your ups and downs and everything and they take it to a lab the lab sends it back to the doctor and let you know what's going on and then i had marked where i felt funny how long i felt funny what kind of symptoms I had. And uh, when I saw a doctor, he said, yeah, it looks like what you marked was pretty much on point what you had, so you definitely have AFib. I'm like, okay, great, you know. Um, and then I was thinking, you know, sometimes AFib could be uh, sourced or a source of AFib is from anxiety, right? So anxiety stress causes the, the AFib versus the AFib causes the anxiety stress, or it could go either way. So like, can you tell it's either way or this? And they're like, I don't know if it's a true answer, but they said, and it didn't look like anxiety. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. But, uh, and bad. And, but I was like, what's the cause of it? Is there anything caused? Of course, they don't know. It's, it's a, in a heart, you know, Western medicine doesn't really look at, um, what you can do as far as figuring out, um, diagnosis, right? Diagnosing the issue. They just treat the symptoms. You have a headache. Give you some aspirin, give you some Tylenol, give you some ibuprofen. Uh, that treats the symptom. Where did you get it from? Don't know, don't matter. Hopefully it'll go away. So that's how it works. And then my choices were basically, okay, uh, take some more medicine so you can feel, you know, bad, but, you know, people from having more AFib, maybe. Uh, actually, two kinds of medicine. A beta blocker that will control the heart rate going fast. And then another medicine to help control your heart rate 
So two medicines. I'm like, oh, great. And then we got to monitor you just to make sure, you know, you don't have an issue with it, you know. And I'm like, great. Or, and a lot of people will say, get a car, um, a cardiac, uh, catheter ablation. So if you don't know what the ablation is, basically they stick this tube up one of your veins, uh, down by your groin, by your neck, or somewhere else. And they stick it towards your heart. They get to your heart. They look for a spot. I think they're called ventricular or ventricles. I think it's four of them. They're AV nodes. There's a lot of term for it. But basically, they're going to burn some spots, scar it. So that way, the regular, I think they got noisy cars. You know? uh, that way, they can burn a spot between your heart, uh, inside your heart. So that way, the communication is not as good so it won't give you this irregular signal so it will be like that I'm like huh but you know there's a chance it could get in your nerves literally you know get crypt of your nerves cause issues and that's another issue that I got last year and something happened with my nerves my eyes got jacked up I started getting dizzy I have tinnitus I got a bunch of stuff with my nerves and in my head I'm like I don't want things close to my stuff like this or other nerves yeah you know it could be very little percentage, like one, two, three, you know, one percent. But I could be the unlucky person, right? That kind of has that one percent issue. And then I'm like, okay. And ablations are not a hundred percent success rate, you know, which is kind of, you know, at least they're truthful. You know, I think it's sixty to eighty percent. And it could be, it could work for days, to weeks, to months, to years. So I mean, I'm fifty-two years old, so I'm considered young for having heart issues. So, that can, that can last a while, right? I might not see it for five more years. But you need another ablation if you don't, if it doesn't work, I should say. Uh, or eventually when it doesn't work, it seems like. And then that has a higher success rate because they already scarred the area and they're going back in and then they're scarring more. I don't know all the technical things, but I'm just kind of like, I don't want anything to be touched. But then you like get these medicines and then I'm reading these medicines might not last forever too. Some people could live on with these medicines for a long time. I personally have tried two, three different medicines and they make me feel bad, you know? Obviously when I'm in AFib, my heart's beating all fast and weird. It's not comfortable either, but kind of like, what can I do? So here I am deciding to go for walks. You know, why? Well, they tell you, like, I was, you know, looking at things, even from an electrophysiologist, about AFib, specializing in case studies, etc. He's saying, you know, some people in Australia, when they were waiting for their ablation surgery, they were still decided to exercise, lose some weight. You know, I'm not totally obese, but I'm, I'm not super thin. And I was thinking, maybe it'll help. Maybe it'll help uh, with the heart, you know, heart health, right? They tell you if you have a heart attack or prevent heart attack or things. I just had an article on my short. I put, you know, I do a lot of steps, like 10,000 steps, 8,000, like even 2,500 steps makes a difference in your heart health. Something, well, if I can walk, exercise, or do something, not only is it going to be good for my heart, but it'll be good for my body anyways. And hopefully it helps with, you know, stress too. You know, I told you I got tinnitus, ringing in my ears. Hoping it helps, you know, reduce that stress, you know, in my head, literally. Um, distracting me, you know, just everything. And, you know, so, just trying to get, just like a better health thing. I'm actually going to sit down. You know, but just, just to be a, a better person. And, that's what I'm doing. I'm out here. I'm hoping, you know, it's like, I saw this YouTube video saying, you know, one of the best remedies is exercise. And, like a 50% chance, 50-50, like tossing a coin. So, you know, why not, right? Why not? So, uh, I'm doing it to try. It's been a few months. I get these ep episodes every few few days, and I, it sucks, but I kind of figured those out. You see my, some of my videos, how I can tell I got the episodes using my watch or my pulse oximeter. And then also, uh, one thing I noticed is uh, using cold water bottle to my neck kind of stops it sometimes and then uh, taking a shower sometimes that's worked um, sometimes it hasn't so 
but they've been shorter intervals. I had some intervals that used to be like a good hour, and uh, it's not like an hour, which is good, but it's still kind of blah. So, anyways, you know, thanks for listening in um, to my video. Hopefully, some of this information can help you. I don't know if it can, but at least you, I think a lot of people have experienced this. It's like one in four people that have aphid, which basically sucks. And, you know, it's, you know, we're all in it. We all have situations in our life. And hopefully, I can get out of this and be okay. So, uh, tell me if you guys have aphid, tinnitus, what ails you, what you've been trying to work on, what you've been trying to improve, what you're looking to, you know, have for quality of life. Um, I'll post up some more videos of what's going on with me. Uh, I got a laundry list. <laughs> it's, uh, this is just like one of my lists or one of my things that's been going on. Um, so I'm just hoping for better feeling. All right. Thanks for watching.